Washington News, the government is stepping up the fight against cyber attacks. A recently introduced bill aims to try and modernize the federal IT system and help protect your privacy. The man responsible for the bill joins us this morning to tell us a little bit more about it. Congressman Steny Hoyer is the House Minority Whip. And Leader, thanks for being here today. Well, glad to be with you. Let's talk a little bit about this bill because we hear so much talk about how the government's trying to be better with cybersecurity protections and trying to modernize things. What specifically does this bill do? Well, I think we have uh, clearly examples of why we need to do this and make our systems more modern and, and, and more agile. Uh, what this bill does, it will set up a fund of $3 billion, uh, and it will be a revolving fund, so uh, they'll draw down on it, then they'll repay it over time, they being various different government agencies. There'll be a board established, uh, which uh, will be headed up by Tony Scott, who's the uh, information officer who comes from Microsoft into the administration. Uh, to make sure that we are using the latest technology, that we are doing uh, uh, large projects, but doing them in a way uh, that the private sector does, is that they, they do a part of it, test it, make sure it works, get it done quickly, and make sure that it's a, a secure uh, system as well. Uh, so this is all directed at trying to make it more transparent, uh, more efficient, more secure, uh, and give the public a more responsive uh, government that they can trust. You know, that, that makes perfect sense, the bill as you just laid it out, but I, I would have thought that that's how things work now. How do they work now? Well, well, you would have thought that they would work that way, but let me tell you, I was uh, on the Treasury Postal Committee that oversaw the IRS for uh, a long period of time, and they uh, in installed a large system, and unfortunately, they didn't test it in small segments, huh. as the private sector does, and as a result, uh, frankly, we didn't do it very effectively or, or very efficiently or cost effectively. So uh, this is going to uh, utilize, I think, the best practices in the private sector, bring people from Silicon Valley and other high-tech uh, centers of excellence into the federal government for their advice and counsel. As a matter of fact, we have uh, started, it's called 18F. Uh, I visited out in San Francisco a, a small office which is utilizing, as I said, the best talent of Silicon Valley to get us where we need to be so that people can have confidence that they get good communication, they get good value for their dollar invested in information technology, and they have a secure system. How, how much of this is bringing in people from the private sector, uh, like the gentleman well, you just the, mentioned from Microsoft? Yeah, I think a lot of it is. Uh, uh, I think that we need to make sure uh, that the private sector, which is more agile and, and moves more quickly, uh, because it can, uh, we're using the experience that they get, the best practices that they uh, install, mm -hmm. and make sure that that's being used uh, in the federal government, uh, because uh, it's absolutely essential in this world that we keep our information technology both secure and up to date and uh, efficient. I, I know this is a bipartisan bill. How much support yes. do you have from the other side? Well, Daryl Issa, uh, who was the former chairman of the Government uh, uh, Reform Committee, uh, is a co-sponsor of it. And he and I have talked about this, and he's excited about it. Obviously, we have to. Uh, one thing we have to do is pay for the three billion dollars, which is the initial fund, which will be a revolving fund, which we think will be paid for by savings in making our systems more efficient. That's exactly what happened in Microsoft when Tony Scott was there. Uh, and I, I think it's what can happen in the federal government. So we're mm -hmm. seeking, I'm, I'm going to be talking to the majority leader. Uh, our staffs have been in communication uh, about this bill as well. Uh, this is a bipartisan, nonpartisan issue, obviously making government uh, more cost effective, more efficient and more uh, transparent is, I think, an objective of both parties. Well, let's talk about an area where there's not so much bipartisan support. Let's talk about the election. Uh, you we think did not, see, huh? Yeah, maybe not quite as much cooperation taking place on the grand stage. Yeah, that's what, probably right. What do you think about where things stand right now after the New York primary this week? Well, I think uh, obviously both Donald Trump but uh, Hillary Clinton had a, a big victory in, in New York. Uh, I think it's uh, made it pretty uh, positive that she's going to be our presidential nominee. And from my perspective, she's going to be the next president of the United States. I think what uh, we saw is a state that knows Hillary Clinton well. Uh, voters uh, came to the polls and they voted overwhelmingly for her. And I think they voted for her because not only does she have a vision, uh, clearly uh, Senator Sanders has a vision. But what they also see in Hillary Clinton is uh, uh, strategy and policies to realize uh, a vision, and I think that's what they what they want. And I think people know uh, she's tough, uh, she's focused, 
she's able and she'll be a, a very good president of the United States of America. So I think that the, that's why she's going to win. So it was a very good mm -hmm. night for Hillary. Uh, Obviously a good night for Trump. Uh, Trump has and, a much and, more difficult path, I think. Stanley, Stanley, what I have to say is I've read a lot of your comments about uh, both Clinton and Trump and what happened Tuesday. And I, 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 it sounds sometimes like you're even more excited about Donald Trump because you think that's going to be good for Democrats in the House and the Senate. Why is that? Well, look, I think uh, I frankly think Donald Trump or uh, uh, Senator Cruz uh, will be uh, opponents that we will be able to take on very effectively and will win. Uh, I think neither one of them reflect, frankly, uh, the broad uh, perspective of the American people, the desire to have the American people uh, see a positive, engaged, effective government uh, in Washington. They don't think that's the, the case now. I, I, I think uh, President Obama, frankly, has accomplished a great deal uh, in very tough circumstances. But having said that, it's clear the American people want to make sure that they have an efficient government. And frankly, Donald Trump is a lot of... Uh, a lot of rhetoric, uh, but uh, no solutions uh, and simply conclusions. And I think that uh, uh, we are excited about that opportunity to run against uh, Donald Trump or Senator Cruz. Both Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders on, on your side of the aisle have tapped into a, a huge amount of discontent in the American agree population. With that. It is a changing electorate. What do you do about that? Well, I, I think that is absolutely the case, uh, Becky. I think that you, you have a lot of disaffected people who see their government uh, as not working as well as it should. I share that view. That's putting clearly, it mildly. <laughs> but, uh, uh, putting it mildly. And, and uh, it's clear that over the last five or six years, we've had gridlock in Washington, a Congress that is not working, a board of directors uh, of, uh, for the people of the United States that's not working as effectively and, and as appropriately as it should on their behalf. And they're angry about that, and they're disaffected about that. And there's a lot of uh, uh, discontent in the, in, the, in the international community as well. And I think we're seeing a response in votes for Trump or Cruz or uh, Sanders uh, to that effort. Uh, I think in the final analysis, they're going to make uh, a, a judgment uh, that one candidate in this race has responsible, effective solutions to offer to them uh, and is tough enough uh, to carry them out and uh, uh, savvy enough to work with the political structure in Washington, D.C. to get things done. So, uh, yes, there are disaffected people. Uh, I share their views. As I said, there are about 10 percent of uh, America that thinks the Congress is working. And I said uh, to the press that I want to find those 10 percent because they don't know what's going on. We had effective uh, uh, over the last uh, two months of the last uh, session of the Congress where we did a lot of things. But we did it because John Boehner resigned. Uh, and in that context, uh, the Republicans uh, uh, deferred, in effect, to bipartisan uh, work. They're not doing it this year on budget, Puerto Rico, uh, immigration reform, tax reform. That's not happened yet. Uh, and I think the American public is, uh, is rightfully upset about it. Any